In this first video for rate of change and slope, we're going to be focused just on rate of change, and then the second half will be focused on slope. So in this, we're going to talk about rate of change, which is defined as a ratio comparing how one thing changes compared to how another thing changes. So you guys have probably seen this before. Um, we think of it as change in y And y is what we consider to be the dependent variable, and then over change in x. And then x is considered to be the independent variable. So rate of change is basically like, how is our dependent variable changing as our independent variable changes? And then even shorter form, we can write this little triangle, which is a Greek symbol for delta, which we use for change. So change in y over change in x. So like I said, I'm sure you guys have seen both of those before. We're going to look at two real world examples here. So example one, it's got the number of students that applied to UCLA in 2004 compared to the number in 2006. And then we want to find the rate of change in the number of students applying for admission. So you can tell here that there's an increase. Like there's fewer students in 2004, there are more students that applied in 2006, so we want to see what the rate of change was. What was the increase like over the number of years? So we set up change in y over change in x. So we've got delta y over delta x. So if you're ever wondering which one should be the y and which one should be the x, remember y is your dependent variable. It changes as something else changes. x is your independent variable. That's something that you don't really have control over. Time is changing no matter what you do. So x is going to be your independent variable, whereas the number of students applying is going to be your dependent variable. So change in y, we had 60,291 students in 2006 minus 56,878 students in 2004. So that's the change in y. That's the change in the number of students. And then divided by change in x, which is the change in time. So this gives us a two-year time span. So this is how this is the increase in the number of students, then divided by the time span. So we'll plug that in. So calculator page. 60,291 minus 56,878. So over the course of two years, there was an increase of 3,413. And then, of course, this is a change in two years. So when we take that number that we just got and divide it by two, we get, oh, well, that's a fraction form. Let's try that again. There we go. In decimal form, we get 1,706 and then 0.5. So when you're talking about a rate of change, this is students per year. There was an increase in this many students per year. So since it's a context-based problem, you always want to give some sort of units so that you know what that number means. Okay, and then this kind of explains what we were just talking about. Real world situations, you're not going to have this perfect, like, it's not like every single year this was the exact increase. That was an average rate of change over the course of two years. And so this is going to be the same type of idea. We've got this chart here that compares music sales for CDs and downloads. You can see that downloads are still selling less than CDs. Um, but CDs are going down, downloads are going up, so we can use this chart to find what they're asking us for. So we want to find the average rate of change of the percent of total music sales for both CDs and downloads. All right, so average rate of change between 2001 to 2008. So let's start with CDs. Okay, so you can see in 2008, 77.8% of downloads, or I'm sorry, of music sales were via CDs, and then minus 89.2. So since this is smaller than this, your rate of change is going to be negative, which makes sense because it's decreasing. And then divided by the year here was 2008, minus the year here was 2001. So if we plug that in... The numerator, we get 77.8 minus 89.2, so that is negative 11.4, so it went down 11.4% over the course of seven years. So divide by seven years, so here's what we get. So negative one point, I'm going to give two decimal places, 6.3% per year. So 
So what this means is that CD sales were decreasing at about negative 1.63% per year. Okay, and then downloads. As you can tell from the chart, downloads are increasing. So in 2008, 12.8% of music sales were from downloads versus only 0.2% in 2001. Okay, so change in time is the year 2008 minus the year 2001. Let's plug this in as well. So 12.8% minus 0.2%. So that's an increase of 12.6% over a course of seven years. So divide by seven years, and it's going up by about 1.8% again per year. Okay, so if you're comparing the two of these, this makes sense. There's kind of a trade-off. Fewer people are buying CDs because more people are downloading music. So you can see that these are actually really close to being the same number. Okay, that's it for the first half.